In lesson 17, it's vertical asymptotes, and ver in 18, it's hor uh, horizontal asymptotes, and then in 19, it's there's another one, and it's called, it's where it goes at a diagonal, it's called an oblique asymptote, and that's found by doing our polynomial division. So our polynomial division is not is not for naught, okay? And when we do polynomial division uh, in this section, we're going to get remainders. So what does that remainder mean? What's it do? And all that kind of stuff. So we're doing more in behavior and how these things curve with these rational functions. All right. So basically this and this are equivalent to each other um, because of the because the way polynomial division is just like long division. So you pick something out. They picked out two, right? And then they subtract it off. So we do this times this would be 2x cubed. This times this is 2x squared. All right, then we subtract it off. We get 5x squared plus 7x. We'll see how they picked 5 is the next thing. Well, we're going to pick 5 too, but we're going to pick 5x instead of squared because we're dropping down a power just like we lose a place value over here. So this and that make 5x squared plus 5x. Then we subtract this off. We get 2 x plus 5. So then see how we pick 2 out next because it'd be 22. Well, I'm going to pick 2 out here, drop the power down. This times this would be 2x plus 2. We subtract it off and we get 3. Our remainder is 3. So a remainder is a fraction by what we divided by. We divided by 11. The remainder is 3 out of 11. We do the same thing here. We put plus 3 over what we divided by x plus 1. So that's the answer to this. When we do our polynomial division with a remainder, you, ha you have a fractional remainder at the end. There's three is the remaining out of what you divided by. Here, you know, it would be uh, 252 and 3 elevenths, right? That's the, that's the answer to it because there's three remaining out of 11 that you couldn't do. So that's the, the division part. Okay, so... We're going to um, focus on this table right here and pick a couple of these out. So what you have to do is you have to think about um, all of these, like this one, this one, this one, this one, are all the same. They're dividing by x plus 2. So that means that um, x equals negative 2 is a problem because if you put negative 2 in there, Right, you're gonna have a, a vertical asymptote at each one of those because you can't divide by zero, so that would cause negative two to, to happen in all of those. All right, um, and that's what and and that's uh, what's going on here. And we're gonna rewrite the form, talk about the end behavior. So um, this here, the the numerator, the degree of the numerator is zero because it's going to be like x to the zero power. The denominator is 1. When it's 0 over 1, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So that's a, that's a rule. Okay. Here, it's 1 and 1. So when it's a tie like this, it's the number in front. So the horizontal asymptote is at 7. Okay. Here, when it's like this, when it's a larger on the top, 2 over 1, there isn't, there's no horizontal asymptote. There's none. No horizontal asymptote. But there's a different kind of asymptote, and it's called the oblique asymptote. So we're going to explore the heck fire out of this problem right here. All right? So what you do is if we're going to put it in this form of uh, P, P of X equals R of X over this. So we're just basically going to divide it and then state the remainder. All right, so let me grab a piece of, well, I guess I'll stick it in this part right here. So I'm going to do x plus 2, and I'm going to divide it into this, 3x squared plus 7x minus 5, because that's what fractions are, right, is division. You're dividing something up, a fraction. So we'll pick it out, 3 and x. This times this would be 3x squared. This times this is 6x. Then we subtract and we subtract. So 7 minus 6 is x minus 5. Okay, so what am I picking out now to make it match? Well, I just need a 1. 1 times x is x. 1 times 2 is 2. Then we subtract it. That goes away. 
and it'd be neg my, negative five or minus five minus two more it would be negative seven. So my, my remainder is plus negative seven over what I divided by x um, plus two. Okay, so what this means is this part here creates a different kind of asymptote. So it's a diagonal asymptote. So it's so y equals 3x plus 1 is an um, oblique or a diagonal asymptote. Diagonal A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. So it's, it's a diagonal line. But also, um, if you look at it, right, remember I said negative 2 plus 2 would be 0, so you can't divide by 0. So, um, so x equals negative 2 is a horizontal, oops, horizontal asymptote. A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. So all of this information goes with this problem over here. So we're exploring the heck fire out of this. So there's no horizontal asymptote because the, the degree on the top is larger than the degree on the bottom, right? Numerator versus denominator. When it's a tie, it's just the biggest coefficient, or it's just the coefficients in the front. And when it's uh, larger and, or smaller and larger, there is, it's always at zero. So this one down here, um, it's one versus three, so it's going to level off at zero again. So the y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote, okay? Um, so I did my polynomial division, and I know that this is the oblique asymptote or the diagonal one. All right, so the best thing to do would be to type this into the calculator to see what I'm talking about. Um, so clear this out. Here's the actual function. So I typed it in, and I hit graph, and it doesn't look like much, right? There is a diagonal line here that it, like, approaches, so I go down to y equals, and I type in the 3x plus 1, which is what I got from our polynomial division, 3x plus 1. And I graph that. And you see it's going to approach this, this boundary, this red line here. Also, there's a, there's a, um, there's a vertical at, oh, I wrote horizontal. Oops. Thinking about two things at once. There's no horizontal asymptote. Vertical. All right. The vertical asymptote is at negative 2. My bad. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be confusing. I just made a mistake. And uh, you can go to the draw menu if you hit second draw. Well, I'm going to do it from the home screen. Um, okay. So if you go to second draw and you can draw a vertical line. You can't graph a vertical line. You can only draw a vertical line at negative 2 and hit enter. And so the, there's a vertical boundary at negative two. So you see how it comes in and approaches that. And then it's like stuck here in that section. So it's like, it's like fences. There's a diagonal fence and then there's this vertical fence and then the graph goes right here and it goes right there. All right. So that's the graph of that. Let's look at the orange page to kind of straighten this out. So this one here we can see that there's this diagonal, this is diagonal boundary. What's the diagonal boundary? Well, they had this function here, and then they did the polynomial division, and they got this x plus 7. So the x plus 7, y equals x plus 7, is this diagonal boundary, right? So there it is. Now, since it's x minus 3, putting 3 in here would cause division of 0. So this right here is x equals negative 3, positive 3, my bad, positive 3, and that's the vertical asymptote. Um, asymptote. Okay, and then this is the diagonal one. All right, and then it's trapped in this section, and it's trapped in that section right there. So that's, that's the graph of this. It kind of looks like a like a, what do I say, like an hourglass kind of thing, or like, you know, like you have the sand going from there to there. 
So that's the graph of this. So this is what happens um, with, with this, is you take this, the, the function, and you divide it, and you get this. That is your diagonal asymptote. Dividing by zero is your vertical one. I'm saying all the words correctly. Okay, and you're welcome to read through all of this orange page. And then they have an application here where you're talking about like, you know, miles or you know miles per gallon and they have this equation and they substitute h in and and so you're you're talking about you know some equation where you're dividing and figuring out you know efficiency of a car so there are applications to this okay so the main thing is um you have this polynomial divided by a polynomial which is why it's in unit two is you got a polynomial which is x squared divided by another polynomial which is just x and then you can divide it. You get this. That's your diagonal. And then there is your fraction left over. And it creates this graph right here. Diagonal. And then there's your vertical. Okay. So it says um, this function can be written in this way. Then talk about the end behavior. Okay. So we know what that means. Um, rewrite the function, blah, 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 into this behavior. So you're going to actually do the polynomial division here. So number two... You're going to have x plus 2, and you're going to divide it into x squared plus 7x minus 12, right? And that is going to, you're going to divide this just like we did right here. And you're going to see that, that um, diagonal oblique, whatever you want to call it, asymptote. Um, so there's, that's number 2. Number 3 is a matching question. So that should match out. Uh, this is a review lesson. So we're dividing here. Um, looking at the remainder. Uh, this one here is a review question. Oh, so we're looking for the zeros of the function, right? That is not a zero of the function. Three doesn't make the function zero, right? So that's not a root. Two doesn't make the function zero. One makes the function zero. So if one makes the function zero, so that would be... Um, x minus 1 would be the factor. So x equals 1, which is this, which is saying x equals 1 makes the function 0. So there's the factor. So we can rewrite it as a product of linear factors. There's 1. And so it has to be four linear factors. So you're going to have four linear factors right here to make it be the same thing as f of x. So you have to go through and pick out the zeros of the function and make it be linear factors. Um this one here, uh, you're basically you're just putting uh, r into the function. So r is 2, 3, and 6, and you're just plugging it in there and finding the height. Um, this one here talks about the situation where r gets bigger and smaller. What's that do to the equation? This is an inverse relationship. So as r gets closer and closer to 0, what's the behavior of the function, the situation? So it's, so it's going to get bigger, right? As r gets smaller, it gets bigger. So it's that inverse relationship thing. And then here, this is the last lesson. Um, so you have to think about like that this one means 99 over x plus 1 because you divide that into there and then into there. So 1, right, is, is where it levels off. So as it gets bigger and bigger, it levels off at positive 1. Um, the value of the expression gets closer. Oh, so match. So it says match each rational function with the description of its in behavior as X gets larger and larger. So D as X gets larger and larger, it's going to head to one. So the value of the expression gets closer and closer to one. So that means that this one matches two and that's how you do it. Ta-da through the purple page. Yay.